Hey everybody, it's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. We are continuing topic 2.8 today, tonicity and osmoregulation. We are picking up where we left off in our last video. Um, so where we left off here was talking about the difference between having a cell, an animal cell, and a plant cell in uh, isotonic solution, hypotonic solution, and hypertonic solution. Um, and we were talking about how the where water moves what, relative to the inside or the outside of a cell is really, really important for its functioning, right? Because it could blow up, it could shrink, it could shrivel, it could plasmalize. Um, if that water, well, if the water motion or osmosis is not regulated, hence osmoregulation. Um, so what we're going to talk about today um, is some additional factors that um, influence osmo, osmosis and osmoregulation. Um, so as I put over here, and we're going to involve some math here, so get your calculators ready, uh, solute concentration and physical pressure both play a role in osmosis. So in our last video, we focused on, okay, if there's more solute on the inside than on the outside, then water comes in. If there's more solute on the outside than inside, the water goes out, right? So that has to do with the concentration of solutes, like say sugar or salt, right? Those little green dots that we had. Uh, but that's not the only thing that plays a role in osmosis. Physical pressure, like pressure, also plays a role in osmosis. Um, so a way to both incorporate solute concentration and physical pressure when we're talking about uh, the motion of water is through water potential, which is, as I put down here, a property that predicts the direction in which water will flow. And of course, it includes solute concentration and pressure. So you will be provided on the AP exam with this uh, formula here. So I suggest writing it down for now. You're going to need it. Um, so we have psi equals psi s plus psi p. So psi is a Greek letter. Um, psi represents what we call water potential, which is this property that predicts the direction in which water will flow. Um, and that constitutes both solute potential and pressure potential. So psi s, s is for solute, psi p, p is for pressure. All right, so that is just kind of illustrating that both solute concentration and pressure play a role in where water is going to go when it comes to cells. All right, so something to absolutely remember here, and I have it on like every page coming up, and it's underlined, is that water is going to move from a region of high water potential to regions of low water potential. All right, so to illustrate this, we have a plant cell down here. I know, more illustrations by me, right? Uh, so check it out. This is the outside of the plant cell, and this is the inside of the plant cell. Uh, let's practice here. Uh, if the water potential outside of the plant cell is 0.5, what we call megapascals, megapascals, um, and the inside of the cell has a water potential of zero megapascals, which is, you know, a measure of pressure. It's a measure of water potential. Which way will wa water move? Well, if water moves from region of higher water potential to regions of lower water potential, then water will move in to the cell. Okay, so this is a good thing for a plant cell. A cell, a plant cell wants more water, wants a net inflow of water. Um, in comparison to say plant cell or excuse me animal cells where they want it to be you know no net inflow or outflow of water um, so in a in a plant cell if this would become turgid okay so that means a plant cell wants to maintain a higher water potential on the outside than a, than relative to the inside it wants to maintain a low water potential on the inside and okay? because it wants water to keep coming in all right um, so how about now if we have water potential that's negative 0.5 megapascals on the outside and the inside is still zero, then water will flow out, okay? And that's not good for a plant cell. That's not good for an animal cell either. If it's flowing out, then the plant cell might become plasmalized where the plasma membrane kind of shrinks relative to the cell wall and it gets all wilting. So that's actually what happens when a plant wilts, by the way. It, um, those cells become plasmalized. All right, so water your plants. Um, all right, so there's another added factor into this, though, okay? Now that we know that, you know, water moves from high water potential to low water potential, and water potential has to do with solute and pressure, okay, let's get a little bit more into what solute potential is all about, okay? Solute potential is always going to have a zero or negative value, and as we had before, water potential is both 
solute and pressure potential, right? But here's what constitutes uh, what we call solute potential, okay? I represents an ionization constant, or, or so it's psi s equals negative I C R T, okay? And we're going to dissect each of these variables here in just a second. Um, so I, as I said before, um, represents what we call an ionization constant, and it's basically a measure of how many ions a substance dissolves into, okay? So for example, if you dissolve salt, NaCl, sodium chloride, into water, it'll dissociate into two ions. So that means the ionization constant is two. But if you uh, dissolve sugar in water, okay, like glucose or sucrose, all right, sucrose only forms one ion when it's dissolved in water. So the ionization constant of sucrose would be one. All right. Um, C is a, a measure of molar concentration. So you're going to see those units as M, or this is molarity. Okay, so molarity is a measure of just how many moles and how many liters of volume. Okay, so it's just a measure of concentration, right? Um, so concentration, R represents what we call the pressure constant. Um, and there's some kind of complicated math that goes into calculating pressure constant, but it's a constant, which is cool, right? So it's going to be the same thing um, every single time, and that's just going to be a value of 0 0.038. So R is always going to be 0 0.038, or excuse me, 0 0.0831. I don't know why I said 3.8, but 8.31. All right, so negative I, C, R, and then T. T is representing temperature um, in degrees Kelvin, in degrees Kelvin. Okay, so if I give you a question where it involves, uh, oh, the solution is, you know, 0.5 molar concentration of salt with uh, a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, okay, you got to take 25 degrees Celsius and add 273 to make it into Kelvin. All right, so both of these uh, formulas here, you are absolutely going to have to have these somewhere. Um, and I will give them to you on a test, okay? And they will be available to you on the AP exam as well, okay? But you have to know what these mean and you know, have, have to know how to use them. Capiche, capoosh, capiche. All right, let's keep going. Um, another few things to remember. Okay, as we, before we head into the example problems of calculating water potential and solute potential. Okay, the solute potential of pure water, okay, if there's no solutes at all um, dissolved in that water, okay, then the solute potential is zero. It doesn't matter how much, you know, it doesn't matter the temperature, it doesn't matter uh, pressure, okay, the solute concentration of pure water is zero because it doesn't have any solutes. Excuse me, the solute, did I say the solute potential? Solute potential of water, pure water is zero, okay, because it doesn't have any solutes. All right, the pressure potential of a solution in open air, which most of our examples are going to be in open air, um, is zero. All right, so unless, say, we were to put a plant cell in like a pressurized chamber or in like a syringe or something and we squeeze the plant cells together I mean, applied more pressure, then the pressure potential would change. But if it's just in an open container, it's, or it's, just, it's like open to atmospheric pressure, uh, then our pressure potential is what is, is zero, all right? Um, so as I alluded to before, the ionization constant of salt, since it dissociates into two ions when it's dissolved in water, um, is two. And the dissociation or the ionization constant of sugar is one, okay? Because it just forms one ion. All right. Let's do this. Let's do some example problems here. All right, example. If a plant cell's pressure potential equals two megapascals and its solute potential equals negative three megapascals, what is the water potential? All right, so this one's not too bad. Uh, this is your water potential. This is your solute potential. This is your pressure potential. If you sub in those variables, maybe you can calculate this on your own or maybe in your head. Um, if you put in those variables, you get negative 3 plus 2, okay? So that means the water potential of this plant cell is negative 1 megapascals. Not bad, right? Got to know that equation, though. All right, um, here's another example. The plant cell from the previous question is placed in a beaker, that should say in a beaker, uh, with no added pressure, uh, with a water potential, or excuse me, a solute potential of negative 5 megapascals, in which direction will water flow? So think about this. Water always moves from an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential. 
Okay, so the solution in the beaker outside of the plant cell is negative five, and the plant cell itself has a water potential of negative one. Okay, so think about that. It goes from high to low, so where's water gonna go? It'll, it's gonna go out of the cell, all right, because, well, we have a high water potential on the inside, low water potential on the outside, so that means water will flow out, which is not good for this plant cell. All right, it's not good, not good. It's gonna plasmalize or something. All right, let's get to our third example here. Now this is going to, you know, it's gonna, I, I skipped a few steps here, kinda, ish. Uh, you'll see. Um, a plant cell's water potential was found to be at negative 3.5 megapascals if you put the plant cell in an open beaker with 0.2 molar salt solution at 20 degrees Celsius what is the water potential of the solution and where would water flow? If you want to try this on your own, be my guest, go for it. Um, but if not, then you don't have to pause the video. But if you are going to try it, I encourage you to try it. Pause the video, try it for yourself, and then we can get going. But all right, let's just say you're not going to pause. Uh, let's do this. So we have the water potential is at negative 3.5. Uh, of that plant cell, okay? So we know the plant cell's water potential. We gotta find out the water potential of the solution outside of the plant cell in the beaker, okay? And so we gotta use our other equation. Solute potential equals negative ICRT. So negative ICRT is our uh, solute potential. Now we gotta plug in our variables here, okay? So if we wanna find out the solute potential, we need to A, first determine the ionization constant, concentration, the pressure constant and then the temperature, right? Okay, so uh, if this is since this is salt, our ionization constant is two. Um, then our concentration of the salt solution is 0 0.2. Here's our pressure constant. Okay, and then of course we have to add 273 because our water solution is at 20 degrees Celsius. So in order to measure it in Kelvin, we got to add 273. Okay, so if we plug those in, hopefully you did that in your calculator, we get a uh, solute concentration of negative 9.7. All right, I got to finish up this video here. Um, so if the beaker water potential is negative 9.7 because there's no pressure potential, it's an open beaker, and the cell has negative 3.5, where is water going to go? Well, it's always going to go from high to low. That means we're going to lose water to the outside again. Um, so poor cell, it's losing water again. All right. That'll be it for this video, okay? We're going to be practicing uh, water potential calculations a lot in class, so if you are intimidated by the, like, the Psi S and Psi P and stuff, okay, don't be, we're gonna be practicing this a lot. Maybe go through the examples one more time and you know, practice a little more if you need be. Let me know if you have any questions. See you later.